If you thought only the best dishes make it to MasterChef, think again. Because these dishes were downright disgusting. And how about starting with a dish that went straight into the trash? This is ridiculous. So in the high stakes world of Master Chef, where culinary dreams are achieved or shattered each episode, Slim, a college student with a passion for cooking, found herself in a pretty tough spot. And the standard is going up from here. As the eighth episode of season one unfolded, the pressure was mounting for Slim, who had been struggling to impress the judges. I'm not gonna even eat this sauce because I don't eat garlic boiled in cream. The stage was set for the iconic mystery box challenge, scene that always whips up anticipation. This time, however, there was a twist. Most of the ingredients were colorfully displayed outside the box. Prosciutto. Peanuts, asparagus. Yet, hidden beneath the notorious mystery box lay a single item that would determine the fate of the contestant. And what emerged from the depths of that box? A crab. <laughs> Lee, with a proud glint in his eye, triumphed in the challenge, showcasing his culinary prowess. But the real challenge awaited in the pressure tap. And they really shook up things this time. Check it out. Of today. Is romance. And guess what Lee went for? Passion fruit. It was a bold choice, one that would test the creativity and the skills of the competitor. Unfortunately for Slim, this challenge wasn't what she needed to break through her funk. She just wasn't one for roses and chocolates. I absolutely do. It's it's horrible. What's more, the judges weren't swayed by her offering. All of that should come through in what you're cooking. With a mix of lamb, shrimp, and fresh fruit, Slim presented what she hoped would be a lovely winning dish. Yes. Yes. However, Cupid's arrow missed the mark. Maybe, yeah. maybe she missed the mark. Not much passion there. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. it's going to be a celebration of her going home. But Slim was all in. There was a lot at stake, and she couldn't afford to lose. Savory dish with a uh, lamb, shrimp, and fresh fruit. And this is a passion fruit ginger sauce. But the judges, they felt differently. They just would not let up with their criticism. There's a lot of ginger in the sauce, right? Yes, sir. Joe even chimed in to express his disappointment. Go back to your station. I'm not tasting this crap. With a single glance, Joe had made the decision and straight into the trash it went. Untouched and untested, the weight of the judge's disapproval hung heavy in the air as Slim's hopes of redemption faded. For Slim, this unfortunate turn of events marked the end of her journey on MasterChef Season 1. Despite her best efforts and unwavering passion for cooking, that passion just did not make the judges fall in love with her dick. Here comes a another dish though that sealed the fate of this next contestant. Yeah, I'm talking about season 5's Whitney Bray. Whitney's journey began like many others, with a nerve-wracking audition round where she stood before the daunting panel of judges, hoping to impress them enough to earn her coveted apron. And as you can guess, Whitney secured her place among the select few with a MasterChef apron tied around her waist. Quarter million dollars would give me the opportunity to finish culinary school. But as the competition heated up and the obstacles grew more difficult, Whitney found herself facing that ever-feared obstacle, the iconic mystery box challenge. You have chocolate, bananas, strawberries, blueberries. In this test of creativity and skill, contestants were asked with creating a mouth-watering dessert using only the ingredients found in their crate. And guess what? Great job. Well done. Courtney ended up winning, but everything took a turn as they moved on to the next challenge. The pressure challenge was about to begin, and Courtney had to make a huge decision. To tell us who you'd like to save from elimination. So first pick. As the clock ticked down and tensions ran high, Whitney poured her heart and soul into her creation, determined to showcase her talents and prove herself as a force to be reckoned with in the kitchen. But it seemed like she used up all her good luck in the mystery box challenge. Whitney made a Caribbean meatloaf, a bold and ambitious choice that ultimately fell short of expectation. Despite her confidence in the dish, it failed to impress the discerning palates of judges, who were quick to point out its flaws and shortcomings. It has the mushrooms going through it and these other things, but it doesn't really taste like anything. Gordon was forced to deliver the harsh truth. It's, it's way overcooked. It's bland. You know, you brought it up. 
Whitney's meatloaf was a culinary blunt. It lacked the finesse and execution required to keep her afloat in such a high stakes competition. And while Joe attempted to offer some explanation for the dish's shortcoming, it was clear that Whitney's time had run out. With a heavy heart, Whitney was forced to face the reality of her elimination from MasterChef season five. And leave the kitchen. Good night. Good job, Whitney. Even though it seemed like it was the end, she left the competition with a renewed sense of determination and a newfound appreciation for the challenges that lay ahead. But Whitney would not let her culinary dreams go without a fight. With her head held high and her passion burning bright, she vowed to continue honing her skills and chasing her dream, knowing that the road to success would be long and difficult, but ultimately worth every moment. And so, as MasterChef Season 5 continued on without her, Whitney Bray remained a shining example, inspiring countless others to never give up on their dreams, no matter how daunting the obstacles may seem. But this next contest narrowly dodged the bullet of elimination. Remember what happened when Dan paired up with Cutter? So in episode 7 of season 5, contestants were paired up in team, and everybody was hungry for a win. But when Courtney, the previous challenge victor, had the power to pick pairs, she threw Dan and Cutter into the deep end to cook up a surf and turf showstopper. With Dan. Wow. Now, Cutter, with his flair for the dramatic, had a gut feeling about mixing two lean proteins. Two separate, you see what I'm saying? If you're doing vegetables and fish, I'm doing protein and, and meat. We're not marrying the dishes together. He warned Dan that it might be a recipe for disaster. But Dan, oh no. He was riding his own wave, carefree as can be. Ignoring Cutter's caution, he dove headfirst into the challenge. I think we're overthinking that. No, I don't. I think that's what he said. That's exactly what he said. As the clock ticked, the pantry was a battleground. Dan and Cutter scurried grabbing what they could, but it was clear their lack of planning had hindered them. Their surf and turf dream was slipping away with each passing second, and when the buzzer sounded, their workstation was a sad sight. Their pantry was bare, a sad testament to the folly of winging. And when it was time to cook, disaster struck. Their incomplete ingredients left them scrambling to salvage something edible. Cutter, known for his fiery spirit, couldn't hold back. A wild tangent in the pantry and by the time we got out of it we ran out of time and so now it's basically a mystery box now he unleashed all his frustration at dan's rigidity and lack of foresight he has an idea i listened to him yeah i told him i didn't like it he just starts grabbing it was like watching a train wreck in slow motion. Enter Gordon, and he was dead set to tame the chefs with his wit and brutal honesty. He took one look at their sad excuse for surf and turf and did not hold back. That is possibly one of the worst dishes in this competition so far. The disappointment was evident in his voice. But wait, things were about to get worse. Joe decided to take things up a notch and brought out the ultimate insult, a trash bin. And no, he wasn't about to sugarcoat it. The tension in the air was palpable as the judges delivered their final verdict. Dan and Cutter stood there, shoulder slumped, knowing their chances of winning were probably in the bottom of that garbage can. I know that this leads to a pressure test, which leads to a greater chance of me going home. In the end, it wasn't just about a failed dish. It was about teamwork, communication, and the ability to think on your feet. But Dan got lucky. He managed to dodge the bullet despite the team's lackluster performance. But not everybody is fortunate enough to survive elimination. You see, Mark Ruffelli embarked on a culinary journey when he stepped into the MasterChef kitchen during season two. His time in the kitchen was a roller coaster ride of highs and lows, showcasing both his potential and lack of skill. Ranked in 17th place, Mark's time on the show is marked by a series of simple mistakes that ultimately led to his early elimination. And what's more, it was all due to a petty mistake. So, as always, in the bustling kitchen of MasterChef, chef, contestants face the daunting task of creating culinary masterpiece under intense pressure. Mark, with a glimmer of promise, showed some early potential that caught the judge's attention, but his propensity for simple mistakes kept tripping him up until it felt like he was always falling. As the challenges unfolded, Mark found himself in a whirlwind of elimination round. Despite the chaos, Mark managed to secure a safe spot after two grueling rounds. It was during one such challenge that Christine selected a dish for the contestants to prepare. The kitchen was a blaze of energy as Mark hurriedly searched for the required ingredients. I have no idea what I'm going to cook, and I have one hour to do it. Amidst the frantic pace, Chef Elliot sensed Mark's determination and expressed his hope for the aspiring master chef. However, when the chef questioned Mark's confidence in his dish, everything came crumbling down. 
In a moment of truth, Mark, perhaps feeling the weight of the competition, stumbled in his response. French no. restaurants? No. Okay, okay. No. So you're kind of flying blind. Yes. yes. Okay. Mark presented his creation to the judges as a peppercorn crusted filet. The excitement quickly turned to dismay when Judge Joe discovered a grave state. And flour? Unbeknownst to Mark, raw flour had found its way into the mashed potato. Yes, raw flour. There's raw flour in here. What? That is a severe technical error to serve raw. It turned a potentially delicious dish into a culinary catastrophe. Seeing this, Gordon couldn't help but to chime in with his disappointment. And adding flour to a liquid mashed potato is one of them. Raw flour and mashed potatoes is a culinary sin, a mistake that should have never been made, much less been served to these judges. And Mark, realizing the gravity of his error, stood in the spotlight of scrutiny. But adding flour to mashed potatoes like that without cooking them down is, is a big no-no. The tension in the kitchen was palpable as Mark awaited the judge's verdict. Despite the unfortunate mishap, there lingered a glimmer of hope that perhaps Mark's overall performance would outweigh this misstep. As the judges deliberated, Mark knew that his fate hung in the balance. In the end, the decision was made. Mark's journey on MasterChef abruptly came to an end. I should have listened to my instinct and, and done it the, the right way. The raw flour incident had sealed his fate, and he bid farewell to the competition with a heavy heart. This was a lesson learned in the unforgiving world of culinary art. Even the simplest of mistakes could lead to a swift exit. Reflecting on his time on Master Chef, Mark admitted that the highs of potential and the lows of mistakes had sculpted him into a better chef, ready to tackle future culinary endeavors with newfound wisdom. I, I wouldn't change it for anything. As he bid farewell to the Master Chef kitchen, Mark carried with him the lessons learned and the determination to up his skills to match his potential. But the same season had another contestant who served disgusting food before the judges. Any guesses about who I'm talking about? I'll give you a hint. He was the youngest contestant of Master Chef season two. That's right, Max Kramer. Now, this dude found himself in the midst of a pressure test that would put his culinary skills to the ultimate test. The challenge? Creating a dessert dish that would would impress the judges and secure a sweet spot in the competition. At just 18 years old, Max was the youngest contestant on the show, but he carried himself with an air of arrogance that didn't really sit well with his fellow competitor. I like the presentation, and I think the judges are gonna find it genius. Throughout the season, his attitude led to several feuds among the contestants, adding an extra layer of tension to the already high-stakes kitchen. But today, I'm talking about the challenge when Max decided to showcase his skills with a dessert he called Tour du Cray. This ambitious creation consisted of an impressive 15 layers of delicate crepes and luscious cream. 15 crepes. 15 crepes. Stacked together. 15 crepes in there? Max, brimming with confidence, presented his creation to the judges convinced that it would earn him praise and a coveted spot to the next round. But hey, it made it to the list, so I guess you'll see how it went. Reality struck hard when Gordon took a bite out of Max's tort du crepe. And believe me, his reaction was immediate and unfiltered. What in the hell is that? <laughs> the disappointment was palpable as Max realized that his dessert had missed the mark by a long shot. Damn. But Gordon wasn't done. To prove his point, he even made Max taste his creation as a form of not-so-sweet punishment. The young contestant's face mirrored the shock and dismay of the judges as he sampled his own dick. It's like I've just gone to the doctors for a skin graft on my butt yeah. and mm -hmm. stuck it in caramel. Joe and Graham, who joined in the tasting and couldn't help but laugh at the unfortunate outcome, Max's dessert, which he had been so proud of, turned out to be a complete disaster. The layers of crepes and cream, instead of harmonizing into a delicate treat, clashed in an unsettling way. The texture was off, the flavors didn't blend well with each other, and the whole thing was a dessert gone wrong. <laughs> That's rancid. All it takes is one small mistake to send you home, and this next contestant learned it the hard way. Deanna Billow found herself in a moment that would define her journey on the show, a totally foolish mistake that left a sour taste in the mouth of both the judges and the viewers. Tonight, the stakes are even higher, guys. 
Diana faced a steep order, creating a soup that would impress the judges. However, in her eagerness to succeed, she made one fatal decision that would ultimately lead to her downfall. Knowing that her tripe wasn't cooked properly, she made a horrific choice. Instead of admitting her mistake and starting over, she chose to hide the raw meat in the soup, hoping to deceive the judges. But where is it? I mean, I, like I said, Chef, I minced it in there, so there's very small pieces. The soup was a seemingly simple creation that should have delighted the senses. However, as the judges took their first spoonfuls, they were met with a shocking revelation. So I have got some raw tripe here. That's what it is. The taste and texture of raw meat permeated the dish turning what would have been a comforting warm bowl into a pit of disgust. No, I can't even pull it. The judges, known for their discerning palates and intolerance for culinary shortcuts, were left appalled. Raw food, a technical and safety crime in the culinary world, had made its way onto their plate. It was a betrayal of trust and respect, a deception that left a bitter taste in their mouth. You tried to hide the fact that it was undercooked, and you dice it all up and put it back and smothered it. As they continued to sample the soups, the judges couldn't ignore the unmistakable flavor of ramen. The once promising dish had turned into a disaster, a concoction that was not fit for consumption. Each spoonful was a reminder of Diana's ill-advised decision to hide her mistake rather than rectify. Nothing angers the judges more than being served raw food. It's a fundamental rule of the kitchen. Food must be cooked properly to ensure both the safety and flavor. Diana's attempt to deceive the judges by hiding raw meat in the soup was a blasphemous error that could not be overlooked. I cut them because they were very chewy and I didn't want you to get a mouthful of just chew. It's the wrong thing to do. What perhaps added insult to injury was Diana's admission of her deception. Instead of trying to defend her actions, she openly admitted to trying to mask the fact that the meat was raw. It was a moment of folly, a lapse in judgment that killed her career in the competition. The judges, with expressions of disappointment and disbelief, knew that this dish sealed her. Diana's attempt to hide raw meat in the soup had turned what should have been a simple challenge into a revolting experience. It was a dish that left a lasting impression, but for all the wrong reasons. As the judges delivered their verdict, it was clear that there was no room for forgiveness. We cannot go any further with you. Diana's dish, once filled with promise, had become a warning for all the remaining chefs in the competition, and it was a harsh lesson learned. So that's a wrap for today's pick of the most disgusting dishes ever served on MasterChef. Do you think I missed out on any? Make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if you thought this video was crazy, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. And hey, don't forget to look up my social media pages. And by the way, do check out this next video right here. It's even crazier.